Hi! Today we're going to talk about ground loops a little bit. Probably don't know what ground loops are, but maybe by the end of the video you will. As an example, today we have on the workbench a Newtone Model 2540 AM FM Intercom Master Station. This particular unit was made in 1973 and it's been fully repaired and cleaned up and it's in good working order again. All Newtone intercom systems from the very beginning, from 1957, always had some type of auxiliary input jack. In the early, early days of intercoms, it was always to plug a phonograph into. Later on, there were cassette players, there were actually eight track players for a short amount of time, but all Newtone intercom systems, all the way up through the very end, through the end of 2010, always had at least one auxiliary input jack. And here on this 2540, you have your input selector switch here, you have AM, phono, and FM, because back in 1973, Newtone still made in-wall fold down phonograph. This particular 2540 has a fairly clever design. The way the set came new out of the box, there's a hole in the bottom edge of the faceplate, and up inside the hole could be an RCA jack that you could plug a portable or movable phonograph into. In the earliest days of Newtone intercoms in 1957 and 1958, Newtone didn't sell phonographs yet, so in the catalog they also sh they show this gal, looks a lot like Beaver's mom, and she's wheeling a phonograph on a roll-around cart over to the intercom to plug it into the jack on the front of the unit, because that was the only thing you had to do it with. On the back of the unit, Here's the RCA jack right here. It's a movable jack as it's installed right now. It's for an internal wall wiring installation so the cable from the phonograph would be hidden inside the wall. But you can loosen the screw, turn the bracket, and then it points down so you can access it through the hole in the bottom. In today's world, people don't play phonographs very much anymore. And what they really want to do is connect an external music source, a modern source, to their Newtone intercom systems, which is something that we've been doing on systems since I began doing this way back in the late 1970s. I have many, many videos that show how you can buy different types of RCA cables with adapters and things to make it all work and you would plug these into the bottom. But more often than not nowadays, what people want is a cleaner, neater installation. So they'll buy from us or have us install one of our little modern 3.5 millimeter, also called 1 8 inch, audio input jack assemblies that has an RCA plug on the other end of the cable. This particular one has the go fast red connector on the end because that makes the signal go faster. This gets installed. We drill a little hole in the master station, mount the jack so it's easy to access, and then you plug it in the back. And basically we've moved the jack from the back of the unit to the outside of the unit where you can get to it. Sometimes when you do that, whether it's with our audio jack assembly or by using the RCA jack that's built into the set, you'll end up with an unexpected surprise. What is that unexpected surprise? It's a small amount of background hum when you move the input to the phono setting that's caused by a mismatch between your audio source, which could be a CD player, it could be your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, doesn't matter. It could be your Amazon Echo Dot. It could be some connection made to some home theater system, something you have in your house. It's a mismatch problem between the source, where the music comes from, and the amplifier that's inside your intercom system. And it doesn't matter what system it is. It is more prevalent on early systems made between 1957 and the end of 1983 than on the more modern sets, which would be 1984 through the end of systems, which is 2010. But it can happen on any system when you plug something into it. And it will vary sometimes from source equipment to source equipment. If you're switching from your phone to an Amazon Echo Dot, then it may be somewhat different because 
the equipment that you're plugging into it, the source equipment, will be designed differently. The little bit of humming noise is what's created when you have a ground loop. So what is a ground loop? And I'm not going to get all geeky about this. This is the easy to understand explanation. A ground loop is a problem that's caused by a small amount of voltage difference between the ground on the source device, your phone, an Amazon Echo Dot, a CD player, or something like that, and the, and the ground of the amplifier, in this case, some type of Newtone intercom system. It would be commonly referred to as an unbalanced input. So the, the voltage on the ground is not balanced between the two devices, and the result of that is you get this little bit of background hum you hear on the speakers on the intercom system because of the mismatch or the ground loop. And of course, you don't want that. It's annoying, it's bothersome, you just had your intercom system repaired, you paid extra to have the audio jack or your using the jack that's on the unit you plug something into it and then you have this background hum now you normally can't hear the hum while the music is playing because the music is much louder but you know it's there and for some people that bothers them a lot just knowing that it's there it's not really a problem in that it's going to cause damage to the source equipment it's not going to cause damage to the intercom system it's just a bothersome byproduct of the two different devices being hooked together what do you do about it how do you fix it so the problem goes away and it doesn't drive you nuts to show you how to do this let's go to the whiteboard because that's the easiest way to explain it so here's our example over here, we have a Newtone Model 2540 Master Station, and at the other end, we have an Amazon Echo Dot, one of my personal favorites for Wi-Fi streaming, for music on demand. You just tell it what to play, and she plays it for you. It's kind of cool, and it's not expensive. The red lines here are the audio cable that connects the Amazon Echo Dot to the Newtone 2540. And what we have here is, in the drawing, we see an audio jack here, and we have an audio jack here. In the master station, it's larger because it's an old school RCA jack and RCA jacks are big, but over here on the Echo Dot, it's smaller because this is a 3.5 millimeter modern sized audio jack, but it doesn't make any difference about the size of the jack because the cable plugs in as long as you have the right ends on the cable, doesn't make any difference. What do the symbols for the jacks mean? And we're going to use this one over here because it's larger and easier for you to see, but they're both the same at each end. It's very simple. You have an outer shield, and that's the ground, and you have an inner connection, which is where the signal is. And it's the same thing on this side. The outer shield is the ground, and the inner core is the signal and that's how the two devices are hooked together. If you do it this way and you get a hum on the master station, it's because you have a ground loop problem. So the question is, how do we solve the ground loop problem? What do we do to make sure that it doesn't happen? What we're gonna do is we're gonna fall back on one of my favorite electronic devices or electrical devices that there are, a transformer. And more specifically, we're going to put in an audio isolation transformer. A transformer that will allow the audio signals to pass through but not the little bit of voltage on the ground that's causing the hum. So the first thing we need to do is we need to break our connection between the output jack of the dot and the input jack of the intercom system and in this whiteboard example it's pretty easy because we can do it with an eraser. Now, we've broken our connection, so the signal that comes out of the dot isn't going to make it to the intercom. The hum has gone away, but you don't have any music either. Now we need to fix it so the music will go through, but not the annoying buzz. So let's go ahead and put our audio isolation transformer in line in our broken audio cable. So we're going to draw in a transformer signal like this and like this, but we also have to draw in the core, which is some metal plates. And since it's its own individual device, we're gonna draw a box around it, like that. That's the symbol for a transformer. So how does that work? If you look carefully, what you'll see is the signal and ground wire from the dot go here 
and they wind through the loops. The loops are a coil of wire. And in the center of the transformer, there are metal plates. And then on the, out, on the other side of the transformer, the signal and the ground wire that go to the 2540, they also have looped wires connected to them. The way transformers work is the signal from the dot comes down through the wires and it goes through the looped wires, the coil, and it creates a magnetic field in the core and the, and the loop wires on this side pick up the signal through the magnetic field and they go to the intercom. But the nice thing about this is the audio signal will go through the transformer, but the little bit of voltage that's causing the buzz on the system cannot because this side is not physically connected to this side. So the buzz stays here and doesn't go on this side. And that's the magic of transformers. And that's how all transformers work. It doesn't matter what you're doing with them. Fundamentally, that's how all transformers work. Since it's an audio isolation transformer, you need to make sure that you buy the right kind because you want the strength of the signal that comes out of the dot to remain equal all the way till it gets to the intercom system. So what you want is a transformer that has a ratio uh-oh, we're doing math now. A ratio of one to one. Which means that if on the, the signal that comes out of the dot, if the signal, and this is only an example, these are not real, real numbers, but it's an example, so it's clear to you, if the signal that comes out of the dot is a two, after it passes through the audio isolation transformer, coming out of the transformer, it's also going to be a two. There's no gain and there's no loss. It remains equal. You're probably thinking, well, that's great. I almost understand all of that, but how do I deal with this? How do we, how do we create this? What is this? How do I do this so that it will work out? Well, that's what I'm going to show you next. So here's how you're going to solve the problem. Here's your one-to-one -one ratio audio isolation transformer. It's this little device. It's not even very big. It's about two and a half inches long and it's only that big, that big square. And what you have on it is you have a 3.5 millimeter input jack on one end and you have a 3.5 millimeter input jack on the other end. And this gets connected in line, just like in the whiteboard drawing between your Amazon Echo Dot or whatever your source piece of equipment is and your intercom system. There's a lot of different ways to do this. We're gonna to continue to use the Echo Dot as the example. So out of the Echo Dot, you're going to have a 3.5 millimeter cable and you're going to plug that in here and the other end gets plugged into your Amazon Echo Dot over there off screen. And then out of this side, what you plug into it depends entirely on your con the configuration on your new tone intercom system. If you did one of our auxiliary audio input jacks, which is also 3.5 millimeter, you would have another little 3.5 millimeter cable and this plugs in here and then it plugs into the jack like that and you're all done. If you're using the RCA jack on the intercom and you're plugging it into the hole in the bottom or through the back somehow, there's a variety of different ways to do it. This is a little stereo to mono adapter. It has 3.5 millimeter at this end and it has a single RCA mono output on the other end. I have videos. I'll put all of the equipment links in the video description down below. A link for the MPAL, a link for this, other cables that you might need. But this would plug into here and then you take your RCA cable and plug this into here and this end gets plugged into the 2540. The configuration of cables is all up to you depending on your application. Just to keep everything clear, the MPAL is a model MA1 PS1. There are other companies that make these also. I bought this on Amazon because that's the easiest place to buy it. This is actually sold primarily as a use for car audio and iso audio isolation transformers are usually something that's more car audio related than home stereo related, but the application doesn't make any difference. They're, they're universally usable on all of them. Where you put this in line with all your cables is entirely up to you. 
You can put this way down over here at the at the echo dot end, or you could put it way over here and put it even behind the 2540. It doesn't make any difference where you put it. Ideally, I think maybe it would be ideal if the cable lengths between the two devices to the audio isolation transformer were equal, but I don't think it really makes that much difference. Finally, one last thing, because I know people are gonna ask me this, so I'm gonna address it now before the end of the video. If you have a new tone intercom system that's 25, 30, 40, 50, or more years old, because some of them are more than 60 years old nowadays, and when you turn it on, and there's a hum on the system and you have no external devices connected to it, it's just the intercom system as it was put in your house when the house was built in 1962 or 1972 or 1982 or 1992 or even maybe possibly 2002. If you have this background hum on the system all the time, none of this is gonna make any difference for you. Audio isolation transformer is not going to help. RCA cables aren't going to help. 3.5 millimeter stereo cables, they're not going to help. None of that's going to help because that's not a ground loop problem. That's a I'm really, really old and tired problem. It's because your set needs to be rebuilt because there's components in the master station that have failed and they're failing more and more every day you leave it like that. And there is no $9 add-on thing that's going to solve that problem for you. you have to get the set fixed. So if you have a background hum already with nothing connected to it, it has nothing to do with anything other than the age of the intercom. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps for someone it will be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.